Good afternoon. This is, we are moving to item number 10, AB 1069. Please proceed. Thank you. Mr. Chair and members, uh, legislation in 2005 authorized counties to establish a voluntary drug repository and distribution program. Uh, this was to facilitate the collection and distribution of surplus unused medications to indigent patients free of charge. Because of the operational requirements, Santa Clara County is currently the only county that has implemented the program. Now that it's been operational for almost five years in Santa Clara County, it has become evident that improvements are needed to help streamline the program's operations, encourage additional counties to participate, and help more low-income Californians get the medicine that they need to stay healthy. AB 1069 would make two important operational changes that would improve the program. Under current law, participating entities must place medications in a new container prior to dispensing to a patient, but this cannot be done in advance. Repackaging donated med medicine is very time consuming because most medicine comes in unit dose packaging, which means each pill needs to be individually popped out and placed in a new container. Uh, this currently must be done while the patient waits. Uh, AB 1069 uh, would first allow participating entities to package the medications in advance, which alleviates the time pressure on the pharmacist and prevents the patient from needlessly waiting. I appreciate the feedback from the Board of Pharmacy uh, and, um, and our conversations with them. And from this con these conversations and feedback, I understand uh, also from the committee analysis that the term repackage may not be appropriate given federal requirements. Uh, it is not my intent to have this bill conflict with federal requirements or federal law. Uh, and I look forward to continuing to work with the Board to ensure that the supply chain remains safe and to take amendments to the bill as necessary to guarantee that. In addition, the bill has recently been amended to include safeguards to protect patients, uh, including limiting the number of medications that can be repackaged to an individual prescription for a supply of no more than 90 days, require repackaged medication to be identifiable as donated, and require that repackaged medication be labeled with all applicable lot numbers, the earliest expiration date, and the number of times that the medication has been repackaged. Further, under existing law, transfers between participating counties are only allowed if the counties are adjacent. Uh, as mentioned, only Santa Clara County currently operates a program. However, however, in the future, as counties establish a program, they would be prevented from transfers if the counties were not adjacent. This restriction is unnecessary and can be viewed as a disincentive for counties looking to establish the program. Additionally, only a county-owned pharmacy can transfer and receive donated medication. Santa Clara County happens to own their pharmacy. However, this is not the case with other counties. So secondly, AB 1069 would remove barriers by enabling transfers between participating counties that establish the program regardless of whether or not the counties are adjacent and would allow a participating entity that is already part of the program to participate in these transfers, not just a county-owned pharmacy. Additionally, the bill was recently amended to limit the transfer between counties to no more than 15% of donated medications annually. This would ensure that uh, other participating counties could benefit from the surplus donated medications while also limiting the number of transfers. Uh, I want to thank the Board of Pharmacy for working with me and my staff on this bill, and I look forward to having continuing conversations with them uh, as we move forward. Our goal with AB uh, 1069 is to increase access to unused medications so that more indigent patients may benefit. Patient safety is imperative to meet this goal. And with that, I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Witnesses in support. Mr. Chairman and members, my name is Adam Kircher, and I'm one of the co-founders of Serum, a nonprofit based at Stanford University. Over the past five years, Serum has partnered with Santa Clara County to run and grow the county's voluntary drug repository program. Serum handles all the donation logistics, such as record keeping, pickup, and shipping, so that the county can focus on serving their patients. Medication is US's second highest out-of-pocket healthcare cost. In fact, one in four working age adults, over half of whom have insurance, skip taking their prescriptions due to cost. According to the American College of Preventative Medicine, not taking prescription medicine results in 125,000 deaths in the US each year. Saving medication from being thrown away can save these people's lives. 
We have already helped donate over 10,000 prescriptions worth over $1.5 million to Californians in Santa Clara County who would have otherwise not been able to, been, to pay for them. These medications have helped patients with mental health issues, dementia, asthma, hypertension, and even HIV. But we are only scratching the surface. California alone has between 100 and $500 million of unopened, unexpired medicine that goes to waste each year. The two changes that Assemblymember Gordon described are essential for this program to continue to be successful and to help more people in need. I want to thank the Board of Pharmacy for engaging with us on the bill. We are committed to continuing to work with them and make sure this program helps as many people as possible while ensuring that the safety of patients and the supply chain. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Mr. Chairman Radigan. and members, Michael Radigan on behalf of the Board of Supervisors of Santa Clara County. Um, the author and Serum have done a pretty good job describing what, what it does. Uh, I'm here simply to indicate that in Santa Clara County, we find this a very successful program, and the modifications contained in Mr. Gordon's bill uh, we hope we'll make it more efficient, more effective, and we'll encourage other counties to consider establishing a like program. Very good. Thank, your you, Thank you. Others in support? Those in opposition? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Mr. Chairman and Senators, I'm Carolyn Klein with the California State Board of Pharmacy. The regulation of prescription drugs in California is very robust, and the board works to ensure that consumers receive safe, efficacious drugs. The degradation of existing requirements, we believe, compromises the drug supply for California's indigent patient population, which is contrary to the board's public protection mandate. Specifically, the bill removes the pharmacist from several aspects of the redistribution program of prescription drugs. It allows a participating entity to transfer drugs like a drug distributor without appropriate licensure and control, and permits what is currently unlawful repackaging and commingling of previously dispensed medications, including donated medications from various sources over a period of time. This is all to the detriment of the patient. In light of con conflicts with existing law, as well as the elimination of important patient safety guards for California's indigent patients, the board um, respectfully opposes unless amended. Very good. Thank you very much. Others in opposition? See no one. We'll bring it back to the, to the committee. Um, and I appreciate the conversation on the repackaging issue. It, it, it looks like something that uh, can be easily resolved. And uh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> And that will be my goal. I'm sure it will be. Um, with the, uh, would you like to close, Mr. Gordon? I don't see questions. And we'll Let me just and then uh, respectfully ask for an I vote. Very good. Thank you. We have a motion. Thank you, Senator Galciani. We have a motion to pass to appropriations. appropriations. Very good. Thank you. Please call the roll. Hill. Aye. Hill. I. Bates. Aye. Bates. I. Berry Hill. Block. Aye. Block. I. Galciani. Aye. Galciani. I. Hernandez. Jackson? Aye. Jackson, I. Mendoza, Wachowski? Five. Uh, Bill has five votes. We'll hold the roll open for absent members. So great. Thank you very much. Assembly Member Ting, welcome. Item number 11, AB 1073. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, as uh, folks walk up, let me just first thank you and your committee staff as well as uh, Senator Jackson and her committee staff. Really appreciate it. I think we uh, finally got a bill that um, you know, has reached agreement from all parties, so really appreciate all the hard work. Um, we're proposing uh, amendments, um, author's amendments listed on page 13 of your analysis in order to address concerns with the bill. As you know, uh, AB 1073 requires all pharmacists to provide translated directions for use to limited English proficient patients. And this can be done in two ways. One is using the translations made available by the Board of Pharmacy. And they have uh, 15 standardized uh, directions for use in five different languages. Or you can provide your own translations for use. And many pharmacies already are doing this. Uh, the proposed amendments provide a conceptual framework that address concerns raised by the oppositions. And we continue to be committed to, con uh, to continue to work together to fine tune the language to uh, ensure that consumer protections for LEP patients are met. Uh, and with that, I respectfully ask for your I vote. We have Very two, good. Thank two you. witnesses. You did say you, you took the, the amendments. That Correct. You, the authors yes. Thank you. Uh, witnesses in support? 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Virginia Harold. I'm the board's executive officer. And after working with this provisions on patient-centered labels since 2007, I'm very pleased to say I think we're very near the end of this. We've set national standards. Um, one of the things I do want to recognize is that many of the translations that are provided to patients right now are being done voluntarily by the various members of the supply chain. I have two board members that work in ethnic communities where they have both been very clear that if they didn't have, if they didn't provide translations on their labels, they would not have a business in that community. Mm -hmm. So for many um, individuals, we want to retain the ability for pharmacists to be able to do their own translations because many do. But where they cannot, we want to make sure that people can read their medication containers. It's important that they're able to do so. So I also ask for your eye vote. Very good. Thank you. Others in support? Kimberly Chen with the California Pan-Ethnic Health Network. We're in support of AB 1073 as proposed in concept. Um, and we really want to thank the author for working with us on it and um, really appreciate its efforts. Um, and we think that the proposed amendments really do further clarify and expand the use of uh, translated prescriptions. Um, with that, uh, we think the bill is moving in the right direction. Um, but there are some amendments that could uh, help further clarify and improve the measure. Um, first, uh, who uh, can request the translated uh, prescriptions? We think it would be appropriate for the patient's um, per, uh, prescribing providers, since providers often also know the patient's needs. Um, English versions that accompany it, the bill in print has a, a provision related to that. Um, we think that it would be beneficial for that to continue as the bill, bill is, uh, is amended. Um, and finally, um, I want to touch on the responsibilities of the dispenser, and of course, um, I want to preface this by saying that we've been in conversation with the author um, and really appreciate his engagement on this and I want to work with him until we kind of we are able to find a resolution to this. Um, on page 13 of the analysis, proposed author's amendments, paragraph E states, a dispenser shall be responsible for the accuracy of the English language directions for use provided to the patient. Um, this responsibility is existing law, so we just wanted some clarification on um, why this was included. Um, the bill doesn't have a similar statement on the accuracy of translations, um, and we believe that that should be the uh, responsibility um, of the dispenser as well. And so our concern with that paragraph is an argument could be made by a bad actor, say, who puts out a bad translation and then could say, well, the statute only dis discusses my responsibilities in regard to the English. Um, and we think that the Board of Pharmacy should and actually does have the authority to uh, take action in, against those bad actors. We just think that the bill could be clarified to make sure uh, the board does have this uh, authority. Um, without that, we think um, this section is, uh, is redundant and possibly could cause some confusion down the line. Of course, I um, want to reiterate, um, we're very supportive of the bill in, um, in concept and uh, very much appreciate the author's efforts on improving access to health care for LEP patients um, and in this measure as well. So um, with that, we're supportive of the bill in concept and want to work on it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate that. Others in support? Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Chair um, and committee members. My name is Angie Minetti with the California Retailers Association. And uh, based on the author's proposed amendments, we're happy to announce that we are in support of AB 1073. Um, this has been a very long process and uh, definitely appreciate the assembly members' willingness to engage and work with us. Um, <coughs> we want to thank the uh, board as well, the sponsor and committee staff um, to bring us to a point. We believe um, that the amendments as proposed proposed do offer a versatile framework which uh, considers uh, the advanced practices that the industry has been doing in this area. And so uh, we're much appreciative and thankful for that. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Brian Warren with the California Pharmacists Association. Um, we are not in support at this time, but we have removed our opposition with the amendments that the author has taken. We thank him for uh, taking the time to work this out, and we look forward to continuing this discussion as the bill moves forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Warren. Jennifer Snyder on behalf of the National Association of Chain Drug Stores. Uh, we also are removing our opposition to the bill. I think in the way that the bill was previously constructed, it had um, immunity from liability for only those types of approaches that um, if someone used the board's translated labels. And that obviously was a disincentive for pharmacies to actually use their own uh, translation services. Um, and we felt that that actually was worse than actually not prescriptive immunity at all. 
And so this new approach um, provides flexibility. It provides um, the ability for uh, pharmacies to use their own uh, translation services, which we think in most cases are going to have more languages than the board's um, options. So we think it's a very good approach. Um, paragraph E is meant to actually provide some protections to pharmacies without having to actually work with liability language, liability immunity language. So we see this as a great compromise, and we appreciate the author working with us. So thank you. Thank you very much. Peter Kellison, on behalf of Walgreens, want to thank the author, the sponsor, your staff for the work done on this issue. They previously had concerns with the bill. They've been addressed by the amendments that were previously taken by the author and then further by your committee. The bill will allow Walgreens to continue doing the 14 translations it currently provides internally without being impeded, and we're happy to support the bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Kellison. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. So I see on behalf of Health Access. We are very much in support of this bill and see it as an important consumer protection measure. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Rocio Gonzalez on behalf of the Latino Coalition for Healthy California in support. Thank you very much, Ms. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Christina DeCaro representing the California Veterinary Medical Association. We'd like to thank Mr. Ting and his staff and your uh, committee staff, Ms. Mason, uh, and the Board of Pharmacy for taking the amendment that would exempt the veterinarians due to the uniqueness of their labels. So thank you. With that, we remove any concerns we have. Very good. Thank you. Is there anyone in opposition to the bill? Very good. Assembly Member Ting. Thank you, to your, thank, you to, thank you to your committee staff. Outstanding job. <laughs> and Senator Jackson's staff, too. Very good. Well, that's wonderful. Are there questions or comments from the committee? See no one? Just, just a Senator thought. Jackson. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I'm just sitting here, the, all the work that you've done and all the opposition that's not in opposition. I just want, why is this, why are these things so difficult to accomplish? Uh, but I, I commend you for doing so, and uh, with that, I'll move the bill. Okay, thank you, yeah. Senator Jackson. We have a motion uh, to do pass to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Is it still going to Judiciary? I guess it is. Do pass to Senate Judiciary Committee. Please call the roll. Is do pass as amended to the Senate amended. Judiciary Thank you. Yeah. Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Bates? Aye. Bates, aye. Barry Hill? Block? Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Hernandez? Jackson? Aye. Jackson, aye. Mendoza? Wachowski? It's got four. four. The bill has four votes. I'm sure it'll have more. So we'll hold the roll open for absent members. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Mr. Ding. Appreciate it very, very much. Assemblymember Gomez. Thought I saw you. There you are. Welcome. This would be item number 12, AB 1230. Oh, yes. Mr. Uh, Chair and Senators, today I'm presenting Assembly Bill 1230, which will create the California Americans with Disability Small Business Capital Access Loan Program and provide $50 million from the general fund as seed money for the program. The program would create a loan loss reserve program to help small businesses finance retrofits to existing facilities. The $50 million from the general fund will be used to start the program and the authority would develop a self-sustaining program with that seed money. AB 1230 helps small business avoid predatory litigation that hurts the, um, that arguably hurts the rights of the disabled because small businesses put more money into legal fees than improving the establishment's accessibility. Um, I just wanted to add that um, this is an issue that came to my attention during my first year in office when a, a staffer of mine, his parents were um, sued by a attorney who had sued numerous, um, oops, my apologies, um, sued numerous uh, um, businesses in the San Gabriel Valley. And it's not really a lot of attorneys, it's just a handful of them targeting often folks in, um, in minority communities, the Asian community, the Latino community. And what um, I realize is that this is a, a problem and how do we uh, uh, solve it? I know Senator um, Galgiani has a bill that tries to deal with it on one part of the equation. My part of the equation is how do we help small businesses become ADA compliant and thereby avoiding those um, predatory lawsuits from the very beginning? And this is um, my idea of how to do that. But her bill is a component. My bill is a component. And hopefully that we, uh, we move the ball forward in preventing these kind of lawsuits. But at the same time, improving accessibility. Um, I, I also want to thank um, the treasurer's office for helping us um, come up with uh, the, 
the mechanism to provide these kind of loans to the small businesses. And um, I have a witness from the treasurer's office, and I'm proud that they became a sponsor of the mm -hmm. bill after we taken the amendments. And I ask for your I vote when the time comes. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Gomez. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Alan Gordon, <laughs> Deputy Treasurer, on behalf of uh, Treasurer John Chung. Um, I wanted to thank Mr. Gomez. He came to us in uh, January uh, with this fairly complicated problem. Um, we have small businesses. There's, a, there's somewhat of a, uh, we call the split incentive problem between the small business and the landlord. Many times the small business is not the landlord. Uh, and uh, through a, a months, of months of collaboration, we went through various options, ran through our finance staff, and uh, Mr. Gomez and his staff were very, very helpful. Um, and we think we have come up with a solution. The CalCap program, we have Janie Davis, who runs the program for the treasurer, for any technical questions. One of the huge problems in this area is that uh, many of the lawsuits, the, uh, the defects don't even get cured. It's essentially a shakedown, the lawyer gets paid. Nothing happens. Um, so the, 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 uh, the wonderful part about the way Mr. Gomez has uh, structured this is that it will be an ongoing program. The money doesn't run out. It's not a grant. We have contracts with uh, banks all up and down the state. The CalCap program allows cheaper money to be made available to the small business people. This is, this is truly targeted at small business people. And uh, we think this will work. CalCap has been very successful in uh, encumbering money, uh, sometimes up to an 18 to 1 ratio on the dollars lent to benefits. And uh, the excellent uh, analysis that your staff has provided captures the complexity of this issue. And uh, we would ask for a uh, I vote. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. I, I do have a question, and since you're quite involved in the program and you mentioned landlords and business owners, so if does this loan go to the business owner directly or to the property owner to make what may be major structural improvements to a facility that is the <coughs> owner's, so who's responsible for the loan and uh, are there different incentives involved in it's, this? It's going to have to be on an individual contractual basis with the bank. Um, they they will have to work it out. It's just not the, there's there's a cap on the amount of the loan, so these are truly small small business loans. But uh, it will be this is contractual. The, bank, the 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 nice part about the CalCap program is the bank doesn't change its underwriting procedures. So the banks that sign up use their existing underwriting procedures. The borrower puts in a point, the lender puts in a point, the bank puts in a point into this. Uh, reserve fund so that you then have a credit that makes the money cheaper. Mm -hmm. But e each individual loan is underwritten by the bank. It is, we believe, one of the more successful public-private collaborations where we use the private market expertise of the banks who sign up voluntarily and use their underwriting procedures to make money available at a lower rate uh, mm -hmm. to business people and, uh, and others with, within this program. And the, the, the loss ratios on this program have been phenomenal over the years, which, which is why uh, a one-time appropriation can go on almost in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, other witnesses in support? Uh, Mr. Chair, Chris McKaylee on behalf of the Civil Justice Association of California. Uh, we're in support of uh, many measures as it relates to ADA. Uh, this House passed Senate Bill 251 by Senator Roth earlier this year that went through Senator Jackson's committee to work more on the litigation front. We also support this, and I would reiterate Mr. Gordon's comment, in the hundreds of lawsuits uh, that we have seen, only a handful require actual uh, changes. In other words, most of the yeah. uh, settlements have dealt with the litigation itself rather than getting corrective Extortion. measures done. Yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. Very good, thank you. Maria yeah. Garcia with Greenberg Torig on behalf of State Farm Insurance and our over 2,100 independent contractor agents who operate as small business owners in California. Uh, we strongly support this bill and other efforts to reform um, and help uh, small businesses comply with ADA. So we ask for your item. Thank, thank you very much. Others in support? Is there anyone here in opposition to the bill? Very good. Uh, questions or comments from committee members? Yes, Senator Galgiani. I'd like to thank the author, and I'm pleased to be a co-author with you on this. I think it'll go a long way to really actually changing the problem because what we've seen in my area for the, a number of years now is that businesses are hit up, not just the business itself, but the property owners, both can be hit at the same time. And thousands and thousands of dollars, upwards of $20,000 sometimes can be paid out 
but yet then there's still no cure and it leaves that business owner, that property owner vulnerable. You found a way to address it to <coughs> actually um, assist with compliance and that's, that's good for everybody involved. So I, I commend you on your approach. Senator Jackson. Yes, thank you. As a recovering lawyer, I feel compelled to, um, to point out that there are a few bad actors, just a few, and it is imperative that we root them out. There's no question about that. It's also imperative, though, that when people are advised that they are in violation of the ADA and thus limiting some people's access, uh, that the corrections are made. Uh, so I think we have to recognize that there is a, a balancing here, that there are, in fact, a number of violations. I would suspect that most of them are inadvertent or unknowing. That's why this bill, I think, is so helpful, because what it does is it says to business owners who otherwise are unaware that they are in violation of ADA, that they are needing to correct the problem so that people have access. You know, the, the Americans with Disabilities Act is well intended. I think every now and then it gets unnecessarily vilified because small businesses find themselves in the crosshairs. It's, a, it's an, a, a legitimate effort to give people who otherwise wouldn't have access, access to what you and I have. And so I thank you for bringing this bill because what it's going to do is, is it's going to let small business, and not the big guys, they know exactly what's happening. It's going to let the small business know that they're in violation and that they need to get this kind of assistance to correct that so that people comply with the ADA. And I think if we talk about it on that basis, there's no villain, there's no good guy, there's no bad guy, there's just a problem that needs to be fixed. And I think this bill uh, uh, deals with that, I think, in, in the, with the right tenor and in the right spirit. And so as a result, I'm going to move the bill. Good. Thank you, Senator Jackson. And uh, would you like to close, uh, Assembly uh, Member Gomez? First, uh, let me thank uh, uh, Senator Galgiani as, as well as Senator Jackson for their support of the bill. And it, and it was really meant to not to point a finger, but to how do we help these small businesses? And then at the same time, how do we improve access? Because the Ford, uh, American with Disabilities Act did help make um, California as well as the country more accessible to our disabled uh, citizens. Um, some bad actors, very comes down to about 20 of them, have been using this as a tactic throughout the state. And that's why you have people who are groups that are often on opposite sides, like the CJAC, but also the California consumer attorneys, both in support of this bill. Because my approach was never to uh, vilify anybody, but really to try to solve a problem, a pragmatic solution to part of this problem. So I think this bill um, is a step in the right direction, and, but we still have a lot more work to do. And I ask for your eye vote. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. Appreciate that. We do have a motion from Senator Jackson. Uh, please call the roll. Do pass to uh, Senator Appropriations. Hill. Aye. Hill, I Bates. Aye. Bates, I Berryhill. Aye. Berryhill, I Block. Aye. Block, I Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani, I Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, I Jackson. Aye. Jackson, I Mendoza. Aye. Mendoza, I Wachowski. Bill has eight votes. We'll hold the roll over for absent members. Thank you very much, Mr. Gomez. <laughs> Assembly Member Holden, welcome. <laughs> Item number 13, AB 1279. <clears throat> Is there music in the air? 